Pokemon Evolution is one of the best things about the Pokemon games. Having a small Pokemon evolving to a really strong, more powerful one with better stats and more awesome moves is one of the best things about the games. However, there is some Pokemon out there that actually get weaker when they evolve, which sounds really crazy, but it's actually a thing. So with that being said, today's video will be going over 25 Pokemon who get weaker when they evolve. Don't hesitate to drop a comment down below about the video and if you found it interesting or not. Don't forget to leave a like on this video too to show your support and I'll be sure to bring out a new video very shortly. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already to keep up to date and follow my Twitter to updates about the channel. Both of those links can be found in the description down below. Now without further ado, let's take a look at some Pokemon that get weaker when they evolve. So the first Pokemon we're taking a look at in today's video comes as a pair and that is Caterpie and Weedle because they're kind of the bug Pokemon of Generation 1. Anyway, when Caterpie evolves into Metapod, Caterpie's attack decreases from 30 to 20 and its speed also decreases from 45 to 30. When Weedle evolves into Kakuna, its attack decreases from 35 to 25 and the speed decreases from 50 to 35. So both of these Pokemon do lose attack and speed when they evolve, which kind of makes sense because they are cocoons, but nevertheless Less. they're evolving, they should be getting better, but they're kind of getting weaker in the attack department. Coming up next, we have Poliwhirl evolving into both Poliwrath and Politoed. When it evolves into either of these Pokemon, Poliwhirl's speed goes from 90 to 70. Probably just to balance these two Pokemon out, I guess, but yeah. It gets slower when it evolves into either Poliwrath or Politoed. Coming up next, we have Onix evolving into Steelix. When Onix evolves into Steelix, its speed goes all the way from 70 down to 30, so losing 40 points in speed when it evolves, which is kind of crazy because that's a lot of speed. Next up, we have Tangler evolving into Tangrowth. When Tangler evolves into Tangrowth, its speed decreases from 60 to 50. So not a huge drop, it's still annoying, but I guess it gets a lot of bulk anyway, so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Coming up next, we have Scyther evolving into Scissor. Now again, just like Onyx evolving into a Steel type, Scyther also evolves into Scizor who is another Steel type, and Scyther's speed goes from 105 to 65. So again, just like Onyx into Steelix losing 40 points in speed, so does Scyther evolving into Scizor. So yeah. Coming up next, we have a double pair being Electabuzz and Magma because they're kind of, you know, they're kind of a pair in Generation 1. Anyway, when Electabuzz evolves into Electivire, its speed decreases from 105 to 95, whereas when Magma evolves into Magmortar, its speed decreases from 93 to 83. So both of these Pokemon losing 10 speed stats. Coming up next, we have Porygon 2 evolving into Porygon Z. Now, Porygon 2 is a very, very annoying Pokemon to go up against with Eeveelite -like, because it just does not die and it gets really good moves as well, like Recover, Discharge, everything like like that. However, when it evolves into Porygon Z, it does lose a lot of stats. So when it does evolve, its defense decreases from 90 to 70, and also its special defense decreases from 95 to 75. So yes, its attack does go up, but the defenses both decrease, so why wouldn't you run a Porygon 2 with Eviolite? It's got better defenses anyway than its final evolution, plus the Eviolite boosts them up even more, so that's why it's so bulky in the competitive scene. Coming up next, we have Mewtwo evolving into Mega Mewtwo X. Yes, Mega Evolve Pokemon also lose some sort of stats when they do Mega Evolve. And it's kind of crazy thinking about Mewtwo as well, because Mewtwo Y and Mewtwo X are some of the best Pokemon in the game. So the fact that Mewtwo loses stats when he Mega Evolves is kind of crazy. But anyway, but yes, when Mewtwo evolves into Mega Mewtwo X, its defense goes from 90 to 70. So even though it's becoming a fighting type Pokemon, it's losing defense and making it a bit more frail, which kind of doesn't make sense to me. But at the end of the day, yeah happens. Coming up next, we have another Mega Evolved Pokemon. I'm talking about Ampharos evolving into Mega Ampharos. When Ampharos does Mega Evolve, its speed goes down from 55 to 45, which kind of makes sense because it's now like a huge dragon type Pokemon. It gets higher attacks and more bulk and everything like that. It kind of has to lose something. Coming up next, we have Murkrow evolving into Honchkrow. This one doesn't really make sense to me because it's a bigger bird, but when Murkrow evolves into Honchkrow, its speed goes from 91 to 71. I didn't realize Murkrow was that fast and I didn't realize the Honchkrow was that slow. I think it should be the other way around because you're a bigger bird, you're going to be faster like Pidgeotto evolving into Pidgeot. It kind of makes sense, so I don't know why it loses speed, 20 speed stats as well, but hey, it happened. Coming up next, we have another Mega Evolution. I'm talking about Heracross evolving into Mega Heracross. When this Pokemon does Mega Evolve, it does lose speed though, going from 85 to 75. 
which does really hinder this Pokemon because, you know, we all know that Heracross is a really good Pokemon, especially Mega Heracross, so losing that speed really doesn't help this Pokemon out. Coming up next, we have one of the most, if not the most bizarre evolution out there. I'm talking about Remoraid, a fish evolving into artillery, a octopus. But anyway, when Remoraid does evolve into artillery, its speed decreases from 65 to 45. This is probably the only part of this Pokemon that does make sense because it's a fish evolving into an octopus. Fishes obviously are faster than an octopus, so that's the only thing that makes sense about this evolution, even though it is one of the craziest things out there. So yeah, the speed decrease, it makes sense to me. Coming up next, we have another two Pokemon, well, technically one evolving into two, but we have Wurmple going into Silcoon and Cascoon. The same thing happens to both, it's just technically two different Pokemon, which is why it's two Pokemon in one slot. But anyway, when Wurmple evolves into either Silcoon or Cascoon, its attack decreases from 45 to 35, and the speed decreases from 20 to 15. So not as big as a drop from, obviously, Caterpie into Metapod and Weedling Kakuna, but still a big of a drop, and you can see why, because obviously it's a Pokemon, a bug, evolving into a Cocoon. So it makes sense that it's slower and doesn't hit. Coming up next, we have Wingle evolving into Pelipper. When this Pokemon does evolve, its speed decreases from 85 to 65. I didn't know Wingle was that fast, but it does make sense because Wingle's kind of like a small, frail bird that you would see flying pretty fast. Pelipper's like this huge, chunky thing with a massive mouth and everything, so it kind of makes sense that it is a bit slower to me. Coming up next, we have Surskit evolving into Masquerade. When Surskit does evolve into this Pokemon, it does lose 5 points in speed, going from 65 to 60, which kind of makes sense and it doesn't because obviously Surskit does go across water which would make it pretty fast but Masquerade has like those four wings that flap all around really quickly which would think would give him a lot of speed but no that's not how it goes it actually loses speed Coming up next, we have another two Pokemon, Ninkata evolving into Ninjask and Shedinja. I mean, we can kind of guess what happens to Shedinja because of its 1 HP. But when Ninkata evolves into Ninjask, its defense decreases from 90 to 45. So losing a big, oh, 45 points in defense. It's not good for Ninjask. And then obviously when Ninkata does evolve into Shedinja, his HP does, of course, go from 31 to 1. But its defense also decreases from 90 to 45 as well. So... Not great for Shedinja, but that ability really helps out at the end of the day. Next up, we have another Mega Evolution being Sableye evolving into Mega Sableye. Anyway, when Sableye does Mega Evolve, it's not great because it loses 30 points in speed, going from 50 to 20. Yes, Mega Sableye is a lot more bulky, but having 20 speed is great for a trick room team, but yeah, it does lose speed when he Mega Evolves. Next up, we have another Mega Evolution being Camerupt evolving into Mega Camerupt. When this does occur, Camerupt does lose 20 speed, going from 4 to 20 which kind of makes sense because he's getting bigger you know he's more stuff to carry he was slow in the first place but when you got more stuff to carry you're gonna slow down it's just you know it's just physics really through the end of the day but yes he does lose 20 points in speed come on next we have trap inch evolving into vibrava now this is kind of crazy because when trap inch does evolve into vibrava it goes from 100 attack down to 70 i did not know trap inch had 100 attack that is absolutely insane 100 attack for a stage one pokemon yes please then it loses it when it evolves into vibrava then obviously it goes up again when it goes into Flygon. So it's just kind of like a graph going up and then down and then up and then down. It's kind of thing that's going on there. Coming up next, we have a fossil Pokemon. I'm talking about Anorith evolving into Armaldo. When Anorith does evolve into Armaldo, its speed does decrease from 75 to 45, which kind of makes sense because obviously Anorith is now a huge Armaldo. It's bigger, it's more to, you know, move around and stuff like that. But Anorith really wasn't that fast in the first place. It's like a little crab thingy. So I'm surprised it had 75 speed, but I think 45 does fit Armaldo pretty well, to be fair. Coming up next, we have a dragon type evolution being Shelgon evolving into Salamence. When Shelgon evolves into Salamence, it loses defense going from 100 down to 80, which kind of makes sense because Shelgon is a shell, you know, it's a spherical ball, it's just of defense, whereas, whereas Salamence is a big dragon, but still, that 20 extra defense would have really helped it out. Coming up next, we have Combi evolving into Vespaquen. Obviously, only female Combis do evolve into Vespaquen, as all you shiny hunters probably do know out there. But anyway, when Combi does evolve, its speed goes down from 70 to 40. Which again doesn't really make sense, because Combi's just a little bee, and then Vespaquen's like a bigger bee, which, yeah, but you'd think it's faster. The wings are bigger. Like, Combi's got these little flappy wings. I don't even know how he's even moving at all with that, because his body clearly outweighs his wings. Then Vespaquen's got some huge wings at the back, so surely that would make sense to make Vespaquen faster, but that is not the way it goes. Coming up next, we have Garchomp Mega Evolving into Mega Garchomp. A lot of you guys probably do know about this one because it kind of makes Mega Garchomp suck. <laughs> but Garchomp does actually lose speed when it does Mega Evolve. It goes from 102 speed 
down to 92 and being over 100 is so clutch in the competitive scene then going below 100 to 92 really doesn't help this Pokemon out. I know it gets more attack and stuff and it gets a bit more bulky but at the end of the day you are four times weak to ice and if you're slower you ain't gonna be able to get that move off at all and you're just dead so that is why a lot of people don't use Mega Garchomp. Coming up next we have Larvesta evolving into Volcarona. This one really doesn't make sense for me because Larvesta is a small little bug evolving into a huge bug with massive wings and it's like a really really powerful Pokemon yet its attack actually decreases from 85 on a Larvesta which I did not know at all. I thought it was coming in at like 40 but it does decrease from 85 to 60 which just doesn't make sense to me at all i don't know why they did that i, I don't I, I, no idea finishing things off though for our last slot in today's video is spupa and scatterpug so scatterpug evolving into spupa its attack goes down from 35 to 22 and its speed goes down from 35 to 29 again just like a cocoon as all the other book types have in this video but then when spupa evolves into the villain its defense decreases from 60 to 50 so yeah, that is pretty much every everything about Spupa and Scatterbook. With that, it does wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did making it. If you did enjoy the video, please do leave a like down below. It really does appreciate it. Also, let me know of any other Pokemon that do actually lose stats as they evolve or Mega Evolve. I do have a couple other videos coming onto your screen in a second, so be sure to give them a watch if you do have the time. And also subscribe if you did enjoy this video and you do want to see more of my content because we do upload Pokemon daily on this channel. That is everything from me though, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing rest of your day. And until next time, guys. Peace.